Hey y'all, in 4 h and here. So, uh, you know, I put in a 1800 Hertz roofing filter in this FTDX 5000 MP. It is in the 600 Hertz slot. Right now I'm listening at 3K. I took out the 600 Hertz roofing filter in case you watched the earlier video uh, because I didn't use it. I did not use it. So, uh, but I do use the 300 when I'm doing CW. You know, if you got a 300, use it. So I thought, yeah, it'd be a little bit more advantageous for me to have a, uh, a tighter filter. In the, you know, this is in the front end of your receiver before DSP. Uh, the DSP is in the back end of your receiver, if you, if you will. Uh, so I took out the 600. I put in an 1800 hertz. Uh, I, I was looking for a 1.2 1200 hertz, but um, NRAD didn't have any. Um, so I went with the 1800 because they had that in stock, and and that's that's a good that's a good compromise, because 1.2 you'd only use that when you absolutely had to, because people are going to sound very very thin, very tinny. So the 1800 is a good compromise, you know, if somebody's two kilohertz away or even three kilohertz away and causing interference. So listen to this. You hear that in the background? Okay, when it comes back, I'm going to switch to the 1800 hertz filter. It's in the 600 slot. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not hearing you very well today, Bob. Are you talking about the capital Buenos Aires gets down to zero or zero del Fuego? There it is again. He didn't talk as long that time. It's not going to knock it completely out, but it helps. It can mean the difference in hearing the other station or not. Now, let's do that instead of using the 600 hertz roofing filter. I'm going to do it digitally. So over here with my DSP, I'm, here's the DSP width. Right now it's at the default of 2.4. I just engaged it. And yeah, we have somebody sending CW over SSB. Sometimes they do that for practice. All right, but there you can hear, you hear the interference? There's, there's without digital, well, it's at 2.4 default. Here it is at 1.8 matching the roofing filter. Now when it comes back, I'm going to turn this off, turn off digital and go back to the physical crystal roofing filter. It's an eight pole filter from NRAD, International Radio. Okay, digital off, the physical roofing filter on. Hear how much cleaner that is because we're dealing with it in the front end of the receiver. Now you, you're not going to knock that completely out because that's that's some splatter. And let's see here. I'm going to I'm going to engage my shift. When it comes back, I'll let you hear shift at zero. Okay. When the noise comes back, I will. There it is. So I just shifted negative 340. Here's shifting positive. I'll turn it, turn shift off. All right, there it is back. You hear how it's more pronounced because it's a little higher pitched. So I'm going negative with my shift. Higher pitch, go negative. Lower pitch, go positive. But like I said, you're not going to completely knock it out. All right, so I'm going to go back to the 3K. Oh, I'm going to wait till he talks again. Back to the 3K. He's not talking yet, but... There he is. 
See, it's just, I tell you this all the time, it's more effective to deal with noise and interference in the front end of the receiver. That's the great thing about the Yaesu hybrids. Now this isn't one, but you know the FTDX-10 is and the FTDX-101D or MP, they're hybrids. They have this type of a front end, very similar to what this radio has. A first IF, therefore roofing filters. So they take care of these, if you work it effectively, and if you watch my FTDX-10 series and my FTDX-101 series, uh, you will see, let me turn that code down. You will see what I mean about dealing with it in the front end first, because you want to take care of the noise and interference as early after the antenna as you possibly can. And that way you've dealt with it before it goes digital in those hybrid radios. Because right after the first IF, first intermediate frequency, uh, it goes through analog to digital conversion, goes into the FPGA, and the field programmable gate array, or well, parentheses, SDR, how about that? Um, that stage, and then of course it's digital all the way down through the DSP, and then it gets converted from digital back to analog and sent to your speaker. So you wanna to try to deal with as much of this noise as you can before it ever goes digital. Now, if you have an FT710, at IC7300 radios like that, that are pure SDR. You do not have this first stage. You do not have a roofing filter. Although I have to say the FT710, especially with its latest updates, the March 27, 2023 update made a, made a huge difference. But even uh, the, the uh, later update, which I think was July, the, that just you know helped that radio a lot. That radio for a pure SDR, it's really competing now. It's just nipping at the heels of the FTDX-10, but it can't quite beat the FTDX-10 in the area of dynamic range because of the, uh, it gets very close though, uh, but because it just doesn't have, it doesn't have the hybrid front end, but boy, it's a powerhouse of an SDR. It's come a long way since I reviewed it last year in, uh, right after it came out. I had an early version I uh, did get the December update put into it, and uh, and that improved it some. Uh, the DNR was the thing that was very disappointing. It's still not as good as the digital noise reduction in the FTDX-10, and and now as of August of 2023, the FTDX-101, it finally got an update that put its uh, digital noise reduction on par with the FTDX-10. It was ironic that the FTDX-10 could beat the FTDX-101 in the area of digital noise reduction. But the, uh, you know, the 710, you can go up to algorithm 7. If you go through 8 through 15, it's going to start sounding like you're listening underwater. Uh, the noise in the background will, like in between people's words. But up through 7 is good now. Last year when I reviewed one, you couldn't go past 3. But, uh, but anyway, it's a great SDR as far as pure SDRs go. But these hybrid front ends that have a similar front end to this 5000, a first IF with roofing filters, uh, right now they still have the edge. But I just wanted you guys to see, why would I take my radio apart? Why would I pull out my 600 hertz filter? Well, it just so happened that it was convenient that I could do that because I didn't use that filter. When I'm operating CW, I use the 300 hertz filter. So I switch it over to the 1800 and situations like this is where that helps. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you found it helpful and informative. Thank you for watching videos on my channel. Stand by for 32 more seconds. I want to acknowledge five of the Patreon team long haulers who make it possible for you to watch these videos. They underwrite the, the cost. They help offset my expenses and I appreciate them very much. So I want to acknowledge them. And if you would like to see more videos like this, well, consider joining that team as well at patreon.com forward slash N4HNH. Please give the video a like if you would and subscribe to the channel. 73 from N4HNH.